Well, hello, creatives, community, and kind folks. Welcome to RPG with DBJ. I am your host, DBJ. And this week, we are talking food and drink. Yeah, we take a subject. We talk about it all week uh, for Monster Monday. Today is Discord Tuesday. Uh, Discord Tuesday, uh, we've been defaulting into talking about mechanics for our tabletop RPG games, and of course using uh, the world's most popular role-playing game, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, as a, a, a general basis for some of our subjects. And today we're going to talk about food and drink. Now yesterday, we talked quite a bit uh, generally about um, adding in the, the idea of using food and drink into your world. And today I'd like to talk about a mechanical thing. I specifically, I'm, I'm actually surprised at myself that I, I kept to it. I specifically didn't want to mention one of the most um, important and famous uh, consumables in all of uh, fantasy and science fiction. I would say it's probably one of the top five uh, consumables amongst fantasy and science fiction and maybe even, <laughs> even fairy tales. No, dear sir, it is not almond milk. It is Spice Melange. Yes, I'm talking about Dune. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm talking about Spice Melange, Dune. The spice must flow. Um, I, do, I don't know off the top of my head the little ritual that is spoken when spice is consumed. Um, and I am not a, a Dunophile, but... Uh, and we're going to get into the mechanics in a bit, um, in a bit. But you're just hear me out here. Um, for those who don't know much about Dune and Spice, um, it is a world in which um, it's science science fiction world in which uh, there is a guild called the Guild Navigators, and those Guild Navigators are the only ones that can uh, take starships and travel between the stars um, to see, I guess, the fourth dimensional world it would take to navigate and through hyperspace, using spice to do so to take uh, starships from place to place. Um, yeah, <laughs> Rick says, yeah, it, uh, is it a food, though, or is it a drug? And the answer is, yeah, <laughs> it's a drug. Um, for some reason, this is just my, my own headcanon, I always considered it to be like cinnamon. I That's... It's my, it's my own headcanon. I don't know what it looks like or what it's supposed to represent or whatever. But also, um, the great thing about Spice Melange in Dune is the truism that he who controls the spice controls the universe. It grants psychic powers. It allows you to navigate through hyperspace. It controls the spaceways. It has a... Um, there are nomadic people that live on the planet Dune, Arrakis, a desert world, in which case there's things called um, Spice Blow that comes out of the sand, um, you know, spoiler alert, uh, created by the, it's the biological um, ex expulsion of the giant sandworms. Thank you very much for that, guys. Um, yes, yeah, Spice Melange and the... the uh, in Wikipedia, it, it does it does look a little bit like a. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Harry. I thought I felt a little twitch back there. Um, thank you very much for the, for the cup of coffee. I'll, as a matter of fact, I'll guarantee you that I will make one and add some almond milk to it. Um, I, I absolutely will. I like myself some candy coffee. Um, maybe some pumpkin spice or hazelnut. Talking about food and drink. All right, so. What does spice have to do with anything? Well, we've got nomadic people that seem to be able to, they consume it or maybe breathe it in or it's even in their skin and it makes their eyes glow and there's a, there, there's a, a psychic awareness that comes from being exposed to it. Um, Cameron, hey, what's up, man? Um, there is, it is a commodity unlike any other that if you control it, it is yours. But Spice also does something else. Spice Melange also does something else for the world of Dune. And that is it, it absolutely positively embraces one of the 
of Brandon Sanderson's Rules of Magic. Now, of course, the books were written well long before Brandon Sanderson came around. But uh, if you are a Brandon Sanderson fan, at least for his, um, his lecture series, one of his tenets is um, the best part of your magic system is not the capability it has. And magic meaning like magic, science fiction, the capabilities, the superpowers, if you will, of your protagonists or the things in your world. It's not what it can do, but it's the limitations of said thing that are far more important. So spice, it is a rare commodity. It is something that cannot be cultivated on other places. You have to be on the planet Arrakis to get it. It is generated in a random fashion by these giant monsters out there in the wild. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, thank you, Harry. Uh, yes, for those who don't know, this show is simulcast on Twitch, sorry, YouTube, and our Discord server, both audio and video. Um, but in order to for me to become an affiliate over on on uh, Twitch, I must have a larger number of average viewers, and I need three or more average viewers per day, and I'm sitting at like two point four. So it's all it's it's all about ratios and. New, numerology and things of that nature so um but when i become an affiliate that means people who want to participate gain that it makes the show that much better so uh so if you'd like to to um support the channel in that way i appreciate it and again thank you very much harry for supporting the channel in the way that you are but um going back to since we are, we are still talking about mechanics when it comes to food and drink um and i'm using spice melange as a a substitute for for a commodity in this world one of the one of the best things is its rarity um it is rare in terms of having it spread throughout the universe it is something that everyone wants but you cannot grow it um cultivate it anywhere it's a it, it's located in a specific location it's generated by the most dangerous creatures in this known science fiction style world um and these inscrutable nomadic people out in a desert world where it's already harsh and nearly impossible to survive on your own in any way and so the the best part of spice melange of the spice in dune is are its limitations where does it come from where do you have it everyone wants it um what happens to you when you have too much of it the the mutagenic effect from the that happens to the guild navigators so what how do we translate this into a mechanical thing well the first part is that having something <laughs> I am not certain where that comes from, Red Dice, but uh, what what I believe I believe that's a quote from Dune, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, Rickard says a more practical version of spice, um, lyrium from Dragon Age. I'm not familiar with lyrium, but yes. Oh, Red Dice puts in the the, the Shia Halund, Halund. It's the name for the sandstorms in Dune. Yep. Oh, wow. And Rickard says, uh, which is far, far more common and used by a lot more people. Yeah, the rarity, I mean, not only is this commodity um, per basically within the, the haven of very powerful creatures, it's in a dangerous location, right? Sandstorms, uh, dehydration, heat, um, out there in, in very far away from civilization, um, the, the, and the threat that there are people out there that have far more control over it or access to it than you do is another thing that's important. But um, you, you guys know I talk about the three pillars of gaming, um, combat, social interaction, and exploration. And having some kind of uh, consumable commodity um, automatically makes their ties some kind of a social and explorative element to it that can really uh, make your your world dynamic right meaning the the minute you create an economy about around some kind of consumable commodity um it means that you have to deal with someone so for an example a, a very simple thing is like um you're in your world there's magic and in order to use magic 
something like spice must be gathered and used. And the more powerful your magic, the more you have to use it. Whether it's drinking mercury or, you know, eating, I don't know, black ambrosia or whatever the case might be, or, um, I don't know, boiled giant spider silk or whatever the whatever crap you have that you've created for your world that is a consumable it just means that every time your player character needs to re-up their their consumable there's two things they're either going to have to a explore and find it some kind of way or b interact with someone who has it and then all the preliminary mutations in between <laughs> yeah thank you dead man <laughs> um rickard says um Lyrium is used in much the same way to grant uh, grant people power with training and also grants mages a boost in power, amongst other things. Uh, you have both mages and the order of mage jailers and slayers who both use it, and they both move around in the world and interact with normal society, so, so common folk come in contact with people who use Lyrium. Now, um, who use Lyrium quite often. And, um, right, and so... Your commodity, whether it's like, for example, spice, which for some, again, my head cannon makes it think of like a thick form of cinnamon that's either like snorted or smoked or placed into food or, you know, almost like making a drink out of it or effervescent. Uh, Lyrium looks like it's some kind of, it, it's like a combination of like energy and crystal and plant matter kind of thing. Is Lyrium is a value but dangerous mineral-like substance. Okay, according to Bianca Adavri, the mineral is extremely volatile and sometimes explodes for no reason. Physical contact with raw lyrium ore, and it goes on. Yeah, and, and of course, again, here we go with the limitation, right? Is it dangerous to get? Is it dangerous to handle? Does it spoil quickly? Um, are there certain classes of people who are only trained to gather certain things? Um, how many lives are lost to gather it in its natural state? Um, how long does it take to process it from its from whatever natural state it has to what you have? Meaning like, um, since we're talking about food and drink, not every animal needs to be killed to consume it. Um, much like say a chicken or a poisonous snake or something. Maybe an animal sheds or breeds or extrudes something from it um, in a limited location. Uh, in our real world, we have, I'm going to get rather disgusting here, there are like these tree weasels, and there's this expensive coffee, and the tree weasels um, eat the coffee beans, and then, of course, they, you know, they crap out the, the, the beans out of there into their uh, feces. And then, then those beans are then cultivated from the fecal matter of the of the the tree monkeys, the tree weasels, or whatever, and then that is then sold. Unfortunately, no one has been able to make a domesticated version of this. But for some reason, the consumption of the of the coffee beans does something to the beans, making it very rare. Thank you very much, very much uh, there, <laughs> Red Dice. Yeah, the the seven or Kevit, is a small, lean, mostly nocturnal mammal native to tropical Asia and Africa, especially the tropical forests. The term civet applies to over a dozen different animal species. Most of the species, uh, yep, yep, <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, and is, ex is very expensive. And one, why is it expensive? Because it has to be, you have to cultivate the beans out of the fecal matter of these these um, animals that live in the trees, in the wild, in the tropics and such, and they haven't been able to... <laughs> uh, looks like payday bars. Y yeah. Um, tell me what it tastes like. <laughs> Crunch, what does this taste like to you? But, but um, it, it, am I being sarcastic? Of course I am. But imagine, if you will... I'm listen, just come pulling this out of my ass. Imagine if you will, like there is a mineral like salt, but it's only possible at when you get it from the fecal matter of say basilisks in this world. And and those who consume too much of it 
um, get grayscale, and too much of it will turn you to stone. But when you use it, it powers your your abilities or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. It's like pulling it out of your ass, like like the like the civic coffee beans. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, but you know, having forcing the players to have to have some kind of social interaction to to re up their capabilities means they automatically have to talk to native people, explorers, commodity dealers. Um, you know, go to engage in um, social niceties. I mean, a simple method of measurement would be, for example, in Dungeons and Dragons, we have uh, ourselves cantrips, which are like zero level spells, and then they have spell levels that go one, two, three, four, all the way up to ninth level spells. How about a simple mechanic? You have to use as much spice as your spell levels. So, what are cantrips? Cantrips are basically that spice is already in you. There's something in it that has already invaded your body and you already have a physical manifestation of it. Blue eyes, um, thick green veins that pulse when you use your magic. Um, maybe strange uh, tattoos appear on your flesh or uh, a, a specific hair color, lock of hair, you know, that the the prototypical lock of white hair or something grows from your from everyone's head or maybe the hair falls out of your body completely and no matter your um, age, race, or gender, you're completely bald from head to toe or, or something, some other mute, mutagenic effect maybe, um, which is also an identifier on who has it or who doesn't. It could reduce your lifespan. Um, maybe that won't have a mechanical effect in the world, but everyone knows those who and I'm calling it Spice Melange as a substitute, right, as a, a placeholder. But like Delirium or whatever, maybe everyone knows the maximum length of age has always been five years, you know? I completely don't understand you there, uh, but okay. Um, Cameron says, um, <laughs> this poop coffee comes comes up a lot on the show. <laughs> Just say it, keep it up. More people need to know. <laughs> uh, butt weasel coffee. Mm, ah, wake up in the morning to a hot cup of butt weasel coffee. But, but again, if maybe maybe consuming this thing is rather like, um, l l shall we say, untowards, right? Much like people who are heroin addicts shooting up. The idea of sticking a needle in yourself socially um, just turns a lot of people off in the first place to do the thing. So maybe just cons how you consume the thing or consuming it in the first place could be a turn off to the general social social norms of your world, right? I mean, drinking a cup of coffee of, of um, crushed basilisk salts um, from their feces, and, you know, they're looking at you like, you're... Are you literally pouring hot water over feces salt? And you're like, yes, I am. I'm a fifth level wizard. Yes. <laughs> poor, 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 right? Devil fruit. Um, yes. Yeah, Rickard says, speaking of eating stuff to get powers, devil fruits from one piece. Yep, yep. Uh, Pet Ogre says, this is supposed to be really tasty, mild coffee. I know Oprah loved it. She's the queen of queen over the U.S., right? Yes, she is. You watch your mouth there, sir. <laughs> Devil fruits. Fruits are mystical, mysterious fruits found throughout the world that, when consumed, grant the eater a special superhuman power at the cost of the eater's ability to swim. That's weird, but cool. Now, um, again, nothing says that this consumable in your world needs to be... Um, needs to grant the exact same powers to the exact same people in the exact same manner. So again, if you have five doses of this spice, maybe you only have five potential levels of spells to cast. And you have to, if you cast a third level spell, you're going to have to use three doses when you consume it and then use it, you know? So that automatically makes a limitation that way. Um, instead of, instead of having schools of magic, Maybe there are 
the consumables grant you that power. So when you consume black ambrosia, that is when you have necrotic or, um, you know, the necromantic schools of power. But maybe there's something known as, um, like, um, I don't know, radiant mountain flowers. And if you eat the nectar of the radiant mountain flowers, it gives you access to healing and radiant abilities. And maybe, you know, you don't have a choice depending on your region or the person who collected it or the value of it. You don't have enough money to get it. Or it could be a, se a seasonal thing. Or maybe there's a need to track down a uh, not just people, but a monster or a creature that deposits such things that wants to defend his territory. And so, you know, maybe basilisks uh, grant you, you know, earthen elemental abilities, and that just happens to be the thing. And and unfortunately, I don't know, uh, Zorns or uh, happen to be around in the in the subterranean realms and underdark, consuming all of the 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 basilisk. I don't know fecal matter. So now you got to worry about finding a basilisk, not turning the stone, grabbing the fecal matter. That other people are looking at you like you're like. You know, you're crazy because you're touching duty, <laughs> um, duty salts. And you have to worry about the Zorns that are like, oh, I love this stuff. You know, the, the Zorns flowing through the earth, grabbing the stuff in the first place, eating it, right? Like, you could start stacking more and more issues and problems in, in finding the consumable and then um, and things going on further. And, of course, if you have a commodity, there's an economy. And who controls that economy? Who knows, right? Uh, Red Man, uh, Red Dice Diary says, uh, that inability to swim was, was dank in a world that's basically full of pirates where everyone's sailing on ships. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Harry, uh, Harry Shore brings up dry leaves in boiled water. Um, you mean like boiling, like, like making a cup of tea or something, like steeping something in it? Um, how we process it also has a limitation as well. Is it, uh, can you carry it around like a potion and just pop a, you know, pop a cork and, and scarf it down? Or does it require, you know, heating the water and then boiling it and making tea out of it? Does it require a um, pestle and mortar to crush the salts down in the first place to get just one, to get one dose out of it? Is it heavy to carry around? Is it dangerous? Is it acidic? Does it, you know, can it only be held inside of, I don't know, very fragile glass containers or wrapped in woven spider silk or something, or is it irradiated and, um, or leaves certain kind of stains on the fingertips and out of the nose and mouth and eyes or something as if you've been breathing in soot or, or something of that nature. Um, Cameron says, uh, the philosopher's leaf, a plant that when smoked grants you the power to use the transmutation spells, you know, if eaten, it does the same thing, but who doesn't? But who doesn't smoke it, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I I love the idea of like having something that is both like uh, positive to you, right? Like it grants you, like a philosopher's leaf, like when it smokes, it grants you um, grants the power to trans, the power of transmutation spells. But if you eat it, it does the it does it to you. And so now you have to, maybe there's, I don't know, maybe there's some animal that goes into your backpack and wants to eat the thing that that ends up transforming into something near your encampment, right? Or maybe smoking too much of it does something to you untowards, whereas um, um, eating it might be the same thing. And again, um, and again, maybe you could do a very simple like a d10 like if you cast a third level spell you have a you have a three in ten chance of having some kind of backlash from it whereas if you carry cast a seventh level spell you have like a seven in ten chance of like gaining some kind of backlash and you could make yourself a little like a ranking like you acquire so many traits and after you acquire so many traits um you either have to like wean yourself off of it, like a, like weaning yourself off of a drug, or maybe there's some kind of atonement, or something in that nature. Yeah, uh, Dead Man says uh, the full devil fruit description. Devil fruits are mystical, mysterious fruits found throughout the world that, when consumed, grant the eater a special superhuman power at the cost of of the eater's ability to swim. 
A devil fruit can grant the user an immense variety of powers that can be used in many ways, from mundane utilities to powerful attacks. They're extremely valuable on the market, and many of the world's most powerful combatants, especially those among the three great powers, have consumed them. The powers uh, that the eater acquires depends on the type of fruit, and that's where I was heading towards, right? All devil fruits can be divided into three categories. Um, uh, paramencia, logia, and zoan. And again, maybe this commodity could be could have a similar source, or maybe like these devil fruits, they come in different manners. Like maybe some are some come from <laughs> the fecal matter of of a basilisk. Maybe another one comes from the 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 collected poison of of um naga venom or something you know maybe something else comes from the 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 boiled the, the boiled uh leftover skin from i don't know special dragons or whatever i mean and anything that you can come up with and maybe to gain like a necromancer to make black ambrosia must collect certain things from someone i don't know what black ambrosia would look or taste like but it sounds pretty foul and disgusting uh, maybe like, I don't know, big chunks of licorice or whatever. I don't know. But the how the skill in creating the thing um, and who controls it, especially if you have a world where you have a commodity, somebody controls it. So um, in our world, we have things like, of, of course, you know, butt weasel coffee. We have oil. We have diamonds. Um, there are, we have wheat and rice. I mean, depending on how prolific your how prolific you want to have your commodity would be based on who has the power right the player characters out in the wild might be like they're kick ass but when they come into a city where where there's literally like mounds of the stuff sitting behind the the, the local noble's castle who's just like scarfing it down like um like scarface you know with a table full of uh, cocaine <laughs> And the PCs are like, damn, yeah, we might not want to go after the, these people because they are like, they are living in this stuff. Like, it's 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 valueless to them. There's so much of it, right? I mean, the idea of like, I don't know, gathering this stuff from mines and maybe there are very powerful people indeed who have access to it. And you can also very easily reskin and reflavor um, and... and Re up some of your NPCs because let's say the they have access to this um, these devil fruits or lyrium or something. If your hill giants or ogres in your world are consuming it, who's to say they don't have access to the, the very thing? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Red Dice says it's an interesting idea. If you had to process a creature to get magic power, a whole industry might grow up around hunting you know, um, hunting, processing them, a bit like the people selling um, kaiju parts in the Pacific Rim. Yo, oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like a whole, when I say an industry, I mean like farms, uh, factories, um, like you said, people capturing, maybe they have to kill the creatures, maybe they have, maybe they can't kill them, but they have to, they are extremely dangerous to handle and they have to grow them. Or like you said, you know, hacking up kaiju parts. Maybe that's a thing where uh, there are special, there are people with low lifespans who are going out there hacking away the at the internal organs of, of like the the kaiju where it comes from. I mean, could you imagine the only access to it is from a tarask, and and the countryside has like a giant tarask where they're hacking away bits and pieces of it. Yes, I know someone has already designed. Um, Salt in Wounds, a, a setting based around the idea of a community around, built a city built around and over top of hacking away at a Tarrasque. Yes, I know that. But um, there are plenty of very common, uh, I'll say legendary creatures in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, the Purple Worm, the Rust Monster, uh, the Beholder, the Mind Flayer. Uh, what, what are some other mindless things? Um, Yes, the Tarasque, there are the Boule, um, hell, and any number of the puddings, oozes, jellies, ge gel gelatinous crap, um, molds and fungi, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah.
Yep, gotta get that. Yep. <laughs> Purple worm. Check out the podcast. Do it. Um, but yeah, it, uh, absolutely. I mean, where, where Dead Man brings up uh, Black Amber from Charmed. Black Amber is a type of amber fossilized tree resin that is capable of awakening powers in a magical being. There is an upside down. There is an upside down tree containing black amber hidden within the command center. And <laughs> you're, you're fine, Red Dice. Um, you, you, you have my uh, permission to plug anytime you wish, uh, even right now, please. Um, but yeah, if like it's fossilized tree resin, where, where are the trees at? Do they only grow in a particular location? Maybe they grow in a in such a harsh location, it's difficult to get to it. Um, maybe there has been an industry that has been trying to cultivate a thing. Is there a criminal organization or multiple criminal organizations that control the the processing and flow of this material or or consumable food item or consumable itself? Um, not only could this commodity be consumable, but maybe there's a time limit to it as well. You know. <laughs> um, Cameron says uh, uranium and plutonium are highly valuable because of their danger and their energy potential. Gather gathering them or carrying them could literally kill you. And g guess what we have with um, with like a uranium, plutonium kind of thing, right? You okay? If we take our a real world item and we can just reskin it into our own world, right? So. What's what's uranium and plutonium? Well, it's a danger to you. It's a danger to other people. So even with, when we don't know who you are, what your motivation is, you're already a threat to everyone else just having it. Now you have to figure, now you have to contend with all the people who want it from you and all the people, meaning all the people who want to use it illicitly. There are organizations who want to ensure that you don't have it for the safety of everyone else right it's not about gaining power it's about getting it out of, out of your hands um it's nearly impossible to dispose of so you can't just throw it down throw it into a, you know a sewer grate and keep going right it leaves a trail so it's detectable so there might be organizations whose only job is to find and detect loose amounts of this um let's call it arcanium so we we we, we now have and we'll flow with this tomorrow so we have arcanium and arcanium is a arcane radioactive material um created naturally by by the excrement of purple worms we'll steal that we'll, we'll use purple worms uh they're massive enough they're powerful enough they are naturalistic enough maybe they go deep into the world deep enough into the uh, subterranean realm to be able to survive the pressure and danger. And then they it's deposited maybe off of their skin or excreted as they dig through the world and, and pop up into the uh, upper reaches of the world. So arcanium is this dangerous material. So um, again, there are governments that want to control it because they know how how volatile it is and how powerful it is. And here, here we have a Cold War, right? Um, my enemy is obtaining Arcanium, I need to obtain Arcanium. Um, you know, the, 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 the more my enemy hoards it, the more I feel like I'm being threatened. So I don't even want the stuff around me, but I'm going to have to get it. And then how do you contain it? Um, is it contained by ever-present rituals, much like lead or containment fields, or like magnetic containment fields? So that power must be... Um, rejuvenated over and over again so maybe there's even a core group of people whose only job is to take shifts to ensure that some kind of arcane magical field is around the arcanium to keep it from leaking out and then what happens when it leaks out is it is it um is it one of those um benefit drawback things like a mutagenic effect that happens to you from the arcanium but at the same time, it can kill you as well. So that could be something else that happens to you, right? Like, like um, it, it could be the pro the progenitor of a lot of our monsters or something, uh, trolls and oozes and other kinds of like mid-level monsters because of people being mutated by it, right? Like if they're mutated by the Arcanium, they feel they feel rejuvenated, like powerful, like you can't stop me, but 
you know, w what happens to their lifespan? Like a drug addict, maybe, it, you know, you're, you're talking a year at the most before they, they, they are consumed by it. Maybe there are rehab locations to either medical, like, like um, uh, biological mutation and harm. So there are places that where there are people recovering from it um, who may have permanent changes to their body. They've grown a third eye. They've grown multiple limbs. Um, they are phasing in and out of existence to the ethereal plane back here. Maybe they are half human, half elemental or something, right? Um, without their control. Um, so they have some side effects. There could also be the more you consume, the more powerful you are. So um, a person who dabbles in it is a CR1, I don't know, CR1 half kobold or something. Uh, they, they take more of it. They become a CR3 salamander or magman or, or whatever. Um, they're a drug lord. They become a CR17 pit fiend or baylor or whatever, right? Like you could, you could reskin, reflavor these kind of things in your world. Uh, dragons, maybe dragons were... Are, are have never been biological. They've always been spawned from Arcanium. But what we didn't know is that they were human when they started out. Yeah, that could be a thing. Um, Cameron says, I could see, um, see Arcanium coming from the purple worms eating through pieces of earth on ley lines. Well, perf perfect, right? So now you have ley lines, which there could be um, excavators or spelunkers who are trying to find those locations. Maybe those. Uh, there's a reason why uh, there are very few locations to build. Like, like if you build in the ley line, you're guaranteed um, masses of purple worms will come up and essentially destroy your haven. So you can't really build on a ley line, but you can put... Um, encampments on ley lines so of course what do people what will governments want to do they'll want to want to find the ley lines quarantine the areas keep everybody away with as much power as possible so they can gather it themselves knowing that the purple worms are going to come and very few people have the power to stop those purple worms but they need the purple worms to dig through the ley lines, whether they are subterranean, maybe they the ley lines could be um, not just horizontal, but vertical, right? Deep into the earth, deep underwater. Um, just because something is deep in the ocean doesn't necessarily mean it's not also deep in, the, in a subterranean realm, right? Or hell, a ley line could be aerial. It could be the confluence of different lines, ley lines, uh, having no bearing on, you know, making it easy for us to get to them. So, but um, people trying to find the ley lines or waiting out the purple worms or following the pathways of the purple worms, knowing that there will always be some other excavators or explorers going after the purple worms. And of course, of course, you've got the people who are protecting the lives of the purple worms themselves. And feeling that the arcanium is just a natural part of our our world our society unless of course you also have a faction of say sages that understand that if we allow the arcanium trails to spread that it could be the downfall of our world so um you guys know me i'm a third pillarist of exploration in role-playing games maybe locations of arcanium are where the most devastating environmental effects happen. Uh, it's where there's the most earthquakes. There's the, I don't know, the moist, most poisonous air. Um, I don't know, windstorms of black glass that sweep through the region or something. Like maybe, maybe there's a, a chaos element to it. Um, going back to like uranium, plutonium, the devil fruits, the uh, the lyrium. Maybe there are different types of arcanium, uh, much like different types of radioactive materials have different half-lives. Maybe there's a half-life, there's a half-life attribute attached to it. Which now, now we're talking about like, um, how is it processed? Do you, 
if you smoke it or if you eat it or you know how is it consumed is it is it worn on the the flesh is it is a chunk placed in the mouth and the, the glow comes out of your mouth and eyes and ears or something like um how are is an ink made out of it and you have a uh, tattoos that are like um noticeable but temporary and they glow out of your skin or something i mean how how it's used might be important how it's processed maybe the arcanium must be mixed with something else to get the pyromantic power out of it um like arcanium mixed with volcanic rock or uh hematite or something or arcanium mixed with you know <laughs> the, the 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 butt weasel coffee you know um giving you power over nature or what have you so again talk just talking uh going back to some mechanics simple mechanics would be uh, you can do a point for point system where the the consumption of one chunk of arcanium gives you one ability to do a thing um you could do a growing I'll say um, um, growing downfall th thing. Um, again, like I said, using a die ten. Uh, if you if you consume three pieces of this material, you have a three in ten chance of suffering some kind of um, drawback or uh, you know downfall or mutagenic effect or psychological effect or loss of power or you you um you overshoot your consumption um transforming you or making you fade away from existence or something like that you could even tie in um outer world effects into an inner world gaming system so uh, why is it some of your players can or cannot um, play in the game maybe because they consume arcanium they fade away from this world Maybe they fade into a, a dream world or they fade into the ley lines or something and a blue energy consumes them as, as the arcanium envelops their powers and their mind is pulled into the, the, an other world of um, where there is no magic. Maybe our real world has no magic in it and arcanium is the only way to pierce our world and the real world of a fantasy right maybe the fantasy world is the real world and our current day world with no magic is the dream and they fade there um i'm stealing this from invisible sun guys bear with me so when one of your players can't show up they had arcanian withdrawals and later on when they when when do they show back up again well when they've when the the um, arcanian withdrawals have faded faded away and they have to come back to the real world which is the world of fantasy right could, could place that in there also um maybe there are predators purple worms boulets something else i don't know harpies doesn't matter um manticores you guys know i like these mid-level classic creatures i talk about them all the time uh, but maybe there are i love Displacer beasts, so I got to throw them in here. Maybe displacer beasts can smell and track down arcanium uh, scent, and these monsters are used as hunters to hunt people down. Could you imagine a like a paladin's order that feels that the arcanium is something given from the divine, and the the clerical order? It's like you know, you're. It's an affront to the to the divinities to have, to have given us a great gift, much like Prometheus giving us fire, right? It's given us arcanium and it exists for a reason. What are you abusing it for? For your own purposes. We're gonna hunt you down. So what do they do? They let the displacer beast sniff this stuff out and they go hunt you down. And so maybe the more you use this arcanium, the greater chance you have of a threat coming after you. Oh, I've used seven doses of Arcanium. Game Master's like, sweet. All right, let me go get grab my book. What is that, CR7 creature I get to throw at you? Just randomly, here we go. Flip, flip, flip. Oh, oh, there's five of you guys in the party. You've used a total of, count, 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 21 doses? Hmm, do I want to get three CR7s or one CR20 and a CR1 lackey? I don't know. Maybe I'll make a chart. Hmm. 
Let's see what could happen. But um, the the idea that uh, again, um, I, I'm going to save a lot of this for Third Pillar Thursday. But um, the the social interaction of this, you can create from like our own own real world. How valuable is the stuff? How many how many factions are trying to obtain it? How do you use it? How valuable is it? How long does it last? Especially if you have, I don't know, warehouses that are, might explode randomly or um, um, it needs to be held in the outskirts of a city. It can't be held near, much like radioactive materials today, you can't hold them near uh, populated centers. Uh, there are also um, um, anarchists who want to bring the whole system down in the first place. All these damn people with, you know, hyped up on Arcanium, we need to get rid of these people. Uh, there could be, uh, again, I brought up divinities or warlock patrons or other people that feel that Arcanium's discovery is a threat to their power, right? The gods are like, oh shit, I, who left that stuff on our little prime material? Damn it, we better try to get rid of it. Um, all right, I'm going to instruct you, uh, you clerics, to go gather that stuff up and and um, yeah, throw it into here. Here's a sphere of annihilation. Go throw it in there, right? Um, um, as well as uh, the monetary value. How much money do you have? Or what favors can you give me to do a thing? Um, someone th the much like gathering together the scientists who are able to turn um hey fat ninja dm yay what's up there dude <laughs> long time no see man great great to have you fat. um yeah may, maybe the much like our own society with radioactive materials the it's not just um it's not even whether you can use the stuff it's the fact that you have it in the first place that makes it a threat. And the scientists, the the sages, the scholars that are able to, the, the apothecaries that are able to cultivate the stuff might be just as valuable and important or more important ever than even the people who can use it in the first place, right? Like if I'm the drug dealer um, and I'm handing out the, the this arcanium, the spice melange, that grants you your power, you'll do whatever I say, because sure you can threaten my life, sure, but you'll never get it. You'll never get a new dose because I'm the one who knows how to make the stuff. I'm the one who cultivates it, right? And so, you know, you uh, hell, you could have. We've already alluded to the the negative social interactions of drinking butt weasel coffee. Um, if you are taking arcanium, which is out of the excrement of purple worms digging through ley lines in the in the subterranean realm you're, you you're already you know smoking drinking consuming this material and people already don't like you but there might even be like the equivalent of drug dens but arcane ones maybe some of those these dens of of um, of inequity uh, allow you to breach other worlds that's what kind of power is there and so the people who don't consume the stuff at all think you're pretty much uh, the worst thing in society. If they go into these drug houses, they don't see anything. But the ones who do consume it, the PCs that use it, maybe they're able to pierce to other worlds. And of course, you, if you look into the abyss, you, the abyss is looking back at you. Yeah, um, so yeah, food and drink. Food and drink is a pretty interesting thing. Now, mind you, me talking about radioactive materials and and uh, excrement and all this kind of stuff. Um, the reason why I believe this ties far more heavily into food and drink than say a radioactive material or we can turn it into that is because we can also wrap around many of our social um, behaviors around the consuming of food and drink. Uh, for example, um, every society has we have our low level, mid level, high level food and drink, right? So let's start from the top. Sometimes we have something that we, we consume in our own society, uh, a certain type of drink or food, but they are rare specialty. It is um, for the people who can afford it. <laughs> you, you almost get the idea of wanting to dress up to consume it. 
maybe it's something that is so valuable because it's rare to consume. Usually, you know, high-end restaurants, um, special occasions are only are only possible. So you could wrap all of your social interactions around that. For example, when the players want to, if you want to make this a high-class thing, the player characters, the 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 arcane uh, endowed player characters that want to get the arcanium. Um, must go to these like dinner parties where everyone is giving a small packet of the stuff. Um, and in this way, the player characters now have to have social interactions with basically an army of their potential their potential uh, adversaries, right? who make up all of their, their um their enemies and adversaries that want to consume the thing could you imagine a player characters going to a place where there there's like a league of assassins there's a war there's warlocks like like just imagine a stereotype of every character class and and nearly every creature type gathering together because they know that this is the one time based on time energy resources that they're able to get just a little bit of this arcanium and the, you know, the, of course, the PCs are there, and everyone's checking them out, just as the PCs are checking all their enemies out. And because of the social niceties and the fact that if the PCs want to go ham on, I don't know, the the League of Giants or something in the corner uh, that are consuming this damn stuff, they know that everybody else is going to come down in, on them like a ton of bricks. Now, then, of course, we have ourselves our medium consumables. Um, our... Our, our working class, our general food that we get from our our supermarkets. Um, if in a fan fantasy style medieval world, these are things you can buy in the open bazaar and markets and whatnot, right? Um, the you can buy the the I don't know, gather black amber and and um, black ambrosia and devil fruits and things at the local market. And so maybe this arcanium is far more open to the population but it's maybe more difficult to harness what it what it is much like i don't know getting together pomegranate seeds and um or whatnot like you can you can get all the proper ingredients but it, you have to mix them together for a specific purpose so an example would be um one type of commodity gives you a certain school of magic and then another type of commodity gives you say uh the level of the spell and then a third type of commodity gives you the source of that spell so let's say let's talk about like say uh evocation so if you want to do a lightning bolt spell so uh lightning comes from um you know the blue the blue mountain beetle Okay, so you've got to go to the place to get the Blue Mountain Beetle, and uh, Lightning Bolt is a third level spell. It is, I'm pulling that out of my ass. I don't know if I'm right or not. Uh, or whatever, Electrical Power or Shocking Grasp is like a first level spell or whatever. So first level spells are um, are the um, red grains from the, the great fields up to the north. Okay, so i got to get the grain together. All right, good. Okay, now I've got to go. And so it, the items might be easy to find, but gathering them together and then processing them might be the more difficult part. And, if, and again, uh, even though this is narrative, this can create a mechanical um, stopgap for your player characters, where it's not just consuming blue beetles and then I cast a lightning spell. Maybe, it, again, it's the pest, uh, pestle and mortar. It is the uh, aging of a thing, like uh, putting it in vinegar and, and burning it in the ground and waiting six months it could be uh, only on the solstice or equin equinox or something under a full moon can you do a thing maybe there is a uh like a certain kind of brew or salt or heat um method or something of that nature that when mixed with the blue beetles then you're able to do the thing um you know much like trying to create explosives in our world sure there are ways where you can get all the ingredients but getting all the ingredients together lets other people know that you probably have some nefarious dealings in mind right separately no big deal all together 
there's something wrong with you. Um, also, maybe maybe the item itself is pretty public, but again, maybe it just leaves a certain trail. Maybe it smells or has a scent or a color or leaves you looking or acting in a particular way. Um, everyone co co consumes it. Their skin turns a very vibrant color, purple or something. And whenever the purple, you know, the the whenever the purples come into town, whether they're dragonborn, halfling, or you know, tiefling or human, whenever they're purple, you know exactly who and what they are, and you just roll your eyes like, oh, here they come again. You know, the local population um, guards looking at you like, yeah, we know what you're up to. You're like, guards, I'm not doing anything illegal. And they're like, yeah, you are, because you're consuming Arcanium. And uh, we know. Look look at your eyes, man. They're all purple and blue. What the hell's wrong with you? Wean yourself off of that stuff, right? So... Yeah, using our real, using real world um, uh, analogous entities would very much fit in this type of consumable world. Also, um, again, the idea that consuming too much of something could also be a um, have a mechanical effect. Uh, maybe you're limited by your statistics, like your constitution. You know, I've got a constitution of eleven. Okay, well, if you consume more than eleven parts then all of a sudden you're going to start to suffer those drawbacks um it could be like again it could be a percentage rating it could be the um you, you could be something that is drawn to you maybe there is a uh, much like owing a drug dealer <laughs> um they they know when you're running low and they try to hunt you down because they know they're the ones who are giving you the fix right um or you consuming the Arcanium is allowing the ley lines themselves to become that much more powerful. Essentially, you become a ley line conduit, and the ley lines themselves might be a, a way for otherworldly powers or creatures or entities to access our world. So maybe ley lines themselves are the re results of those who have... Um, consumed too much they've died they've they've transformed themselves into pure power and so it is this addiction will turn you into pure power so maybe there are otherworldly beings that want you to consume the arcanium so that one day just one day while you're hanging around people someone you know someone does the um does the um, my stomach hurts chest burster thing in the open square and the pcs are like oh shit <laughs> they're gonna blow and all of a sudden it's like what is the, the blue power like rips through their their body and they explode into something like um like a humanoid sized um neuron or something in a, in a town square and everyone's like oh no the pcs are like damn it it's a ley line and now all of a sudden here come the purple worms and then uh, uh oh here come the purple worms coming up through the uh you know um Hours later, you can actually feel the ground rumbling and shaking and, and whatnot. And so, of course, the PCs are like, well, I wonder if that's going to happen to me. Shit. Yeah. Um, um, Cameron says, I could just imagine Nightcrawler getting into a pickle in, in that world. Yeah, tra um, transporting from place to place, maybe? Um, maybe these ley lines have the side effect of allowing powerful people to tr to teleport uh trans instance from location to location so ley lines are a transportation ability as well so although the maybe the purple worms are consuming the ley lines so there is this like mitigating effect of the ley lines existing and then being consumed or something i don't know it's it's this is all out of, out of ass <laughs> This is all butt weasel coffee. So anyway, um, but but yeah, you you guys know. What I mean. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, this week we're all we are talking nothing but food and drink. Uh, tomorrow, of course, is World Building Wednesday, where we're probably going to take this Arcanium idea and stretch it even further. And then Thursday is third pillar of exploration. Thursday, 
And that's where we talk about using uh, the third pillar of gaming, uh, where, you know, it's not just combat and social interactions, but actually, actually exploring the world, um, both narratively and having actual mechanical effects as well. So we'll, we will talk, talk about that Thursday. And then Friday, I believe, um, we will not be talking about food and drink. We will be, uh, it will, future Friday, we talk about uh, transhumanist tabletop gaming, and we will be talking about ubiquitous security and how the hell do you get away with crime in a in societies where everyone is recording everything all the time, um, you know, uh, ad infinitum. Oh, so hey guys, thank you very much for um, being part of the show. I really appreciate it. And um, by the way, if you uh, want to support uh, long form content, not just mine, but but anyone else. Um, go over to uh, Red Dice Diaries dot uh, com. You'll find everything you need there, um, and also check out RPG with DBJ dot games. You'll find like our Discord server and Facebook page, and and uh, Critical Hit Publishing, who I am a a contributing writer to Critical Hit uh, Publishing. I write the cinematic environs. Um, series themselves. You can check that out. And please like, share, subscribe, follow, um, get notifications, comment, comment afterwards, um, mainline this show, um, have it go into your ear hole and uh, invade your, your cortical stack, guys. Uh, everyone, have a great day. I'll see you later. I'll see it be in the Discord. Mm -mm, bye. And the hesitation is there.